Hi everybody, I'm Dan John from danjohnuniversity.com. For my entire life, I've loved American football. Uh, the reason I got into discus throwing is because I read a book called Seven Days of Sunday by Elliot Asinoff. And on Wednesday, they had a linebacker named Kenny Avery. And I basically, the, he told his life story and I just followed along what he's done. So probably since 1967, 1968, I've had this massive love affair of American football. I played for a long time, uh, including adult football leagues. I coached for decades. Um, I've had my, uh, I've had my injuries. You know, I, I, I broke the end of my left elbow off uh, on a tackle. Uh, I made the tackle, and then broke five pieces off my elbow. I've had some concussions. I've had some neck issues, but to, all in all, I'm I'm a big fan of American football, and I always will be. But uh, my good friend Brian sent me in, uh, some videos and he would like me to react to it. It's about a Miami Dolphins quarterback, Tua, who's, who's, really, who's really special. I mean, he, he truly is special. So what's gonna happen now, he asked me to look at these videos. And so here we go. And this is video number one. And I have to press play. Well, I mean, I, I just have to have a quick reaction. Um, I'm a little surprised that, uh, that I didn't, I just personally, I didn't like, I mean, I just didn't like that hit. I mean, I, I thought that was a, the play was all already well over, but uh, nobody cares what I think anymore. So we will move on. Now he was, he came back, I guess, in the second half after cleared and he was fine. And what's strange is I've seen athletes, they, yeah, I, I, haven't, I haven't yet seen what else Brian wants me to see, but sometimes weird things happen. Uh, uh, my brothers and my father would talk about it in war. Uh, you would, they would say someone would die and they looked just fine and another person was you know, ripped to shreds and said, I'm okay to go. It's just kind of, so injuries are always tough to read from an outside perspective, okay. So, that same Thursday, I guess they had another game, and uh, he takes an additional hit. Um, okay, yeah, I, I, I in, in full candor, I, I don't want to say anything about any of the staff, the medical personnel, the strength and conditioning coaches, because, you know, you're constantly, I always felt like I was stuck in the middle. Uh, I was at a practice yesterday, a uh, high school football practice, and an injured athlete kept telling the coaches, I'm fine. I don't know why they won't let me play. And he was kind of being very uh, uh, aggressive to the to the coaching staff. And I thought, and and it's funny because you juxtapose this twenty, literally twenty four hours later, watching this. Uh, I would never show uh, an injury to a coach because I wouldn't play. Back when I was young, the high school I went to was an outstanding uh, football program. And if you if you if you went out, you never went back in. And um, as a coach, one of the things I try to make sure is that we had rules so that the athletes knew if you were tired, it's okay to you know tap your helmet, come out of the game, or replace you. Because I don't want an exhausted athlete trying to win one for the Gipper or whatever that phrase is. So the first thing I want to do is make sure I put that out there in the world. I, I am not 
second guessing the medical staff. I'm not second guessing anybody. Having said that, uh, the second hit by the Bengal uh, defensive lineman, um, Tua should have let that ball go. He shouldn't have been trying to. He he still perhaps plays more like a high school or collegiate football player, and he's still you know thinking you're the best out in the field and you can just make anything happen. But, there were opportunities for him to get rid of the ball early on that play and save himself or just throw it out of bounds. But here's the problem with the concussion protocol. Three weeks ago, with a kind of fresh head, maybe he does roll out to the left, tosses that ball out of bounds, claps his hand and lives to play another day. I'm extremely concerned about this. My thoughts on concussions, uh, my biggest concussion in my life has nothing to do with American football, though I got, seems I got several doing it. Um, my most serious concussion um, was when I got hit in the head with the discus uh, my junior year at Utah State. And uh, basically, I don't remember anything that happened for the bulk of the six months after. Uh, my professors uh, later had long discussions. Uh, they invited me up about oh, 15 years ago to, to speak to humanities, arts, and social studies. And the professors were still talking about how it was clear that I had massive uh, personality and emotional changes, and I had no ability to remember anything from the classes, which is not a good thing for a student. Now I am very careful about it. I've worked with uh, uh, some of our special warfare concussion experts uh, I do what I'm supposed to do. Uh, I work on my sleep. I work on. I do use ice baths and things like that. Uh, I take, you know, I take care of myself. There are some supplements. I don't want to say too much because I, I feel like I'd be giving medical advice. Um, in American football, we have tried to prevent this by moving more to the rugby tackle, which is sometimes called the hawk tackle. The downside of it is it's not a very good tackle. And if you go to typical high school games now, uh, missed tackles are very, very common. When I played, we were taught to use the, the helmet as a weapon. And sadly, of course, uh, in uh, the town, uh, town just south of me when I was in high school, uh, a young man died on a play. He, he broke his neck using his head as a weapon. And of course, our coaches were very stringent after that telling us, and I can quote, <laughs> I don't wanna throw anybody on the bus, but. One of my coaches said, I never ever one time told you to use your uh, helmet as a weapon. And the funny thing is, literally the week before he told me that to use my helmet to inflict pain on the opposing player. The problem with that is what connects your head to your body is this little area here called your neck. And you can see on the second concussion by Tua that the whipping, the whiplash neck is probably what caused all the damage. Um, I mean, I don't know if he's going to play again. I don't know how bad the injuries are. But, you know, just from my observations, I would be extremely careful uh, of this. Uh, we, we, there is a, a we, have, we have problems with suicide, uh, both in the military community and uh, in uh, football, with, with people being very despondent, very down. And, 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 of course, we don't teach them the skills of, you know, I'm, I'm down, I'm despondent, I need a friend. Folks, if, if you're feeling that way, reach out. You know, there are people out there willing to help you. And my concern is, is that we're going to see these kinds of things. Uh, concussions are bad, concussions, but I'm, I'm worried about death here. Um, what do the concussions mean for football and for the National Football League especially? Um, You know, we ignored it for so long and pretend it didn't happen. We, we did. We, we pretend it didn't happen, even when a lot of us knew there was a problem. Uh, I remember playing with one of my teammates where he was dinged, and we used to call it dinged. Uh, there, there's probably every school in the state, nation had their own term. And he was sitting on the sidelines just rocking, covering his eyes because his eyes hurt so bad. And one of the coaches questioned his toughness. I think we've come a long way since then, but we still have a long ways to go. Um, I still love American football, and I think there's great value for it. I know this is that 
men and boys need community. One of my concerns with the pandemic was that men need to be in community. Now you can disagree with me, but I'm right. Men need to be around community to help the rest of us, you know, edge us back in line. Uh, if you're at a if you're at a workplace or you're at a school and you say something stupid or inappropriate, one of your coworkers will say, "Come on, you can do better than that," and will catch you early. Sadly, if you're online, if you're, you know, and I'm sure there'll be some idiot comments on this because that seems to happen all the time. Uh, um, people say things online they would never say in real life. And if they said them in real life, they might get beat up. Uh, I grew up in, a, in South San Francisco, and if you said something stupid, out of place, inappropriate, uh, a World War II vet, a Korean vet, Vietnam vet might just uh, explain it to you in terms that you'll remember for the rest of your life. So. I, I think football can teach. The thing about American football is we've not yet lowered our standards. The, the, it is by far a game that has the highest standards of any sport I've ever been involved in. There is no kumbaya, come on out, everyone group hug, uh, who has the, what mom has the orange slices and, and the power rate. We don't do that. We, we are... It is still a sport that requires and demands massive amounts of discipline and free will and focus. And that's good for a lot of young men. It was good for me. So you catch me in a tough question because I, as always that happens in just about everything I do, I slide back to the economic model of cost to benefit ratio. and. I will still defend American football for a while because I still think the benefits uh, outweigh the costs. Having said that, I think we got to be even more diligent and even brighter about the concussion protocols. Um, those are brutal hits. Uh, the Bills hit. I, I think it was you know, you know, I'm not going to blame the defender, but. He certainly didn't need to hit him, and I'm, I was a little surprised uh, how hard uh, the, the hit ended up being. And in the Bengals game, I, I don't want to point fingers, but I think there's a lot of fault to go around. Um, I'm doing my best here. I'm trying to support a sport I love. At the same time, you know, pointing out that we've just got to be better about the concussion protocols. I'm Dan John from danjohnuniversity.com. I hope that helped.